Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tech Ministry blog. I want to show you today a couple of tools that I've been using recently uh, that have been pretty helpful for us. Uh, the first is this tool called Zabbix. If you've not heard of Zabbix, it is an open source monitoring solution for your network. And so you can set this up to monitor all of your machines on your network for uh, just general uh, statistics like memory usage and hard drive space and file transfer speeds and things like that. Uh, you know, all the way up to even more complex methods. Um, and one thing that we're using it for is called a simple web check. And what Zabbix can do is it can periodically go out and uh, just confirm that certain network services are running, uh, certain websites are available, or TCP services. And so uh, that's particularly helpful in our organization because we run a lot of custom services, things like Companion, we run Chronicle, we've got, of course, Tally Arbiter, and we want to just make sure that all of these services are running. And if they go down, I want to get notified. And so another tool we've been using lately to get notifications is this service called Notify. It's push notifications to your phone. And so how this works is you put a custom app on your phone. It's called Notify. And then you send messages to a certain topic and then your phone is subscribed to that topic. And then whenever something gets pushed to that topic, you get a push notification on your phone. Uh, they also support a browser interface so you can even view notifications in your browser if you want. And so you can see here, these are some of the topics that I've subscribed to that we use for things in our Chronicle server. So I might get a notification on Chronicle if, uh, if a job failed to run uh, or that something is you know recording at a certain time, just things that help me know, hey, that's working, I don't need to go check it. Uh, and so I've also set one up for Zabbix. And so the way this is working is now, let's say, for example, I've got Companion running on one of my computers and Companion stops running. Uh, well, within a minute, Zabbix is going to go check and make sure Companion is running. And if it's not, it's going to send me a push notification. If it were to come back online without my intervention, I'd get a notification for that too. And so that's just a way to help us know, hey, you need to go look at this ASAP because it is down versus, you know, waiting to find out that it's down some other way. So I'm going to walk you through kind of the process of setting that up um, and how it works. So if you come over here to Zabbix, we'll go to Monitoring, Hosts. And you'll see here I've got a few different hosts set up. Uh, Zabbix supports what they call the Zabbix agent, which you can actually put on your production machines or wherever you want that can report back to your server all of their statistics, things like memory usage and hard drive space and all of that stuff. Um, and then you can also set up your own other hosts if you want to have it do uh, certain checks. And so let's say... For example, I want to show you my Auditorium One companion server. Um, it's actually just a, a Mac Mini here in the control room for that auditorium. Uh, and so I've got it set up with a web monitoring to uh, just log in and say, hey, is this server running? If good, then we move on. If not, then it's going to send me an alert. Uh, so let me just set one up from scratch and show you how that works. So we have here. Uh, on our, uh, we have a hypervisor here in the, the server room for the network. Uh, and so I'm just running um, a virtual Linux install there. And on there, I'm actually running Docker to run several containers. And of course I administer those in Portainer, which is kind of a, a graphical user interface for Docker. Uh, but one of the things that we run on that server is Companion, we run it centrally. Um, so here's an example, you know, this is just running on my virtual server. It lets me have that available for just anything, you know, that I want to want to do with companion, obviously. Um, and then, you know, I can monitor that in Portainer. Um, if you've not used Portainer, you can watch videos about that. Uh, but here is my, uh, Docker container for companion. Um, and so I just, I pull that straight from companion and I can update that image to the latest code anytime I want, which is super easy. Uh, I've even got the satellite port published so I can connect a stream deck to it if I want to. Um, <clears throat> so 
Here's the process to monitor that. We're going to come over here to Zabbix and I'm going to create a new host. And I'm going to call this the central companion server. And I'm going to go ahead and add an interface. Uh, this isn't really necessary because I'm not going to be running the agent on here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, and set that up. Uh, and I'm going to hit add. Oh, I got to add it to a group. So uh, in Zabbix, you can have several different groups. You can define these groups. Uh, I'm just going to call this an application. And I'm going to hit add. And so now I've got this new companion central server host. And I'm going to come over to the configuration area and go to web. And uh, these web scenarios are where I could create a new scenario to monitor a site. So I'm going to say create a new one, and I'm going to call this companion server check. And uh, I want to say, let's check it every minute. Uh, attempt one time. We'll use the Zabbix agent. This is basically what uh, the service would see, like what browser you might be using. But we don't really care uh, what agent HTTP agent is. We'll just leave it as Zabbix. And then I'm going to, before I click add, I'm going to come over here to steps. And I'm going to add a step. And just for simplicity, I'm going to call this again companion server check. And then here is where I want to give a URL. And so um, I'm going to give it this one here, which is what opens up by default when I open uh, companion. And it's just going to try to check this every minute. And I'm going to choose follow redirects. And then I just want to make sure that I get a, a 200 HTTP HTTP status code in return. That is the normal response status code. Uh, you've probably heard of other ones like 404 uh, or 501. If you have a server error, uh, you can Google all the status codes. But 200 is the typical normal response. Everything is good. And so I'm going to say I require that status code and I need to get it within 15 seconds or I'm going to assume that the service is down. So I'm going to click Add. And now that I've added that here, I'm going to click Add here. That's the same Add button that's over here. And it's added. So now that I've added that web scenario, I'm going to come over here to Triggers. And I'm going to uh, add a new trigger. So it's automatically filtering by this host, which is the one I just made. So let's say Create Trigger. And I want to, I want to call this Central Companion is Down. And... <clears throat> Uh, this way, this will trigger any time uh, that uh, web scenario has failed. So let's go ahead and add an expression here. And um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to jump over to one of my other web scenarios and copy that expression um, just because that is a little bit easier for me. Um, so let's grab this and then let me uh, jump back over to that new host that I just made and then we'll create a new trigger and then I'll explain to you what that expression is doing so again central companion is down and obviously if it's down this is a disaster we want to know ASAP that it's down so uh, this is going to say, let's last check this host. So I'm going to change this name to the name of my host, and I called it Central Companion Server. And then Web Scenario, Web Test Fail, and I called it Companion Server Check. So this is the name of the web scenario. Whenever <clears throat> that fails, the value is 1. So that's uh, this expression just says, hey, if the value is not 0, then we need to send a trigger. Uh, I'm going to check allow manual close if I need to close this trigger for any reason like, hey, just ignore this problem. And then let's make sure it's enabled. And I'm going to click add. All right, so we added that here to our central companion server host. And so now anytime <clears throat> that were to go down, uh, it would it would say that it's a problem. So uh, if we come up here to monitoring and go to problems, um, you can see uh, the only problem I have right now is that my Zabbix server is not running an agent, which is fine. I don't really care about that right now. 
So I'm going to show you what would happen if I actually had a problem. So I'm going to come over to Portainer and I'm going to check this uh, companion container that I have running. And I'm just going to pause it. You can see here if I come over to the browser, I try to reload this. Well, now it's not working. It's going to time out. So if I come over here to Docker, within a minute, it's going to notify me that I have a problem. So I'm just going to refresh this page a couple times. Uh, it might auto refresh on its own. I'm not 100% sure about that. <clears throat> but it will pop up here that, hey, your central companion server is down and you're going to want to fix that. Obviously, I paused it manually for this test, uh, but there could be some other reason that maybe it crashed. Um, or, you know, if you're running the desktop application on your computer, maybe the application got closed out or the computer shut down or whatever it is. Um, so look there, I've got a problem and it's a disaster and it's telling me, hey, this is a problem. So that's great and all that it shows this to me here in the interface, <clears throat> but not really helpful if I'm not watching the interface. And so what I want to do is I want to get an alert. And so Zabbix has a way to send alerts to all kinds of media types. And when you install it by default, it comes with a whole slew of options. Uh, I kind of deleted all the ones in here that I thought I would never use and just kind of limited it to the ones that are left here. Of course, the only one that's enabled is the one for that for Notify. Uh, now, Notify uh, is not included by default. Uh, someone in the community uh, created a Notify uh, media type, which you can then import. <clears throat> um, I found that script from them and I modified it a little bit and of course submitted a pull request back to that repository to include my improvements. Uh, but when you send a message to notify, it just it's a simple uh, REST API request. And so it supports all of these different headers that allow you to say, hey, I want to send it to this URL uh, with this message and this severity. Uh, the severity is what defines the uh, in the push notification. Does it need to appear on my phone right away or does it show up? You know, maybe in my summaries, obviously, if it's not a, a huge deal, I don't need to see it right now. Uh, now, Notify also supports uh, authentication. You can use bear tokens uh, or username and password if you're running your own server. I'm just using the public server for now. I will probably spin up my own uh, Docker instance at some point, but then I'll need to poke through firewalls and get all that stuff set up. So it's not really a priority for me right now. Um, but these, this is all the different fields it has, and you can see here is a script. This is really what's provided by uh, that repository. Uh, and it just it's a very simple JavaScript that reads the parameters, builds the uh, structure that Notify needs to receive, and then it just it sends that as an HTTP post. And so a uh, couple things on configuring this. Uh, you need to uh, set up a macro. And so if you come over to administration macros, uh, these are basically like global environment variables. You can think of them like that. And so I've set up the URL here, which is uh, notify ntfy.sh. and just gave a little description there, but you also need to assign media types to your users. And so uh, for my admin user, I have one media type here and I gave it this uh, value. And so uh, and I said, you can use it any time, any day of the week, any time of the day for any of these severities. And so this is the topic that I'm using. Uh, this is the topic that Notify is going to send that message to. And so once I've got that set up, now I can set up an alert. So I'm going to come over here to actions and I'm going to say trigger actions. And I'm going to create a new action and I'm going to call it alert that central companion is down. And the condition is a trigger. And when that trigger for central companion is down, I want to start this action. So I'm going to add, come over to operations. And for operations here, I'm going to say, um, let's send it to Zabbix administrators. And I only want to use the notify service and let's just give it a nice custom message. Central companion server is down. The central companion service has stopped. Please restore it immediately. And I'm going to click add. 
And I also want to include one for recovery, which means that it has come back online. So I'm going to say uh, again to the same administrators, but I only want to use this media type. Uh, you could just blast it to everything, but this is the only one I want to use. Central companion is back up. And click add. So now I've got these operations. One sends it when it's down, and one if it recovers, it comes back up. And so I am going to click add. And that's essentially done. So uh, that's going to send it to this FG Zabbix topic. So let's watch how that works. So I'm going to come back over here to companion and I'm going to resume. And now within a minute, Zabbix is going to realize that it is back up and it's going to recover this problem. Uh, and it's going to log how long it was down and all that. Um, I don't really care to get a notification about that. Those are variables that you could include. Uh, I really just want to know if it's up or down. And so uh, within a minute when it has uh, pinged that web scenario to go, hey, is it back up? And of course, I can see it's back up over here myself because it's loading now. Uh, I will get a push notification sent here for that. So let's just refresh this. It's still waiting. We do have to wait, you know, about 60 seconds. It just depends on where in that interval the problem got resolved. All right. So here's my notification that it's down. So, hey, I got to get this fixed. I actually just got a ding on my phone about that as well. Uh, so now I'm going to come back in here to Portainer and I'm just going to resume this. And within a minute or so, this uh, problem is going to show resolved. Look at that. It's back up. So that's just a simple way to use Zabbix and Notify to get push notifications on your phone. Again, this is all free. You can run uh, Zabbix on you know, any OS. Same with Notify. It's a free service, but you can use their own uh, if you want to run it you know, from source. Uh, so overall, pretty cool resources to help you keep track of your machines and their statuses uh, and just you know, be notified when something comes up or down. So I hope this helps you guys. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, and uh, I'll see you later.